welcome to my first of many Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. Can we believe we're finally saying that? And can you believe that I'm nailing out these tutorials on the day of release? Why? Because many of you are sitting there thinking, wow, did I just waste 180 quid on something that's actually a downgrade from Final Cut Pro 7? Um, no, you didn't. I mean, there are things out of place. No one hits the nail on the head harder than Larry Jordan, and I guess advise you to Google him and read his most recent blog post about Final Cut and where it's going to go. Um, but the basic idea is that Final Cut Pro took um, editing where it needs to go for the past 10 years and it's got progressively better, but it isn't the platform that they needed for the next 10 years. And so they wanted to start again, so to create a better platform for the next 10 years, basically. Um, but go and read his article, it's really it's quite interesting as well. So what we're going to be covering today is auditioning clips. Um, you can see I've got this sequence here, I'm just going to turn down my volume. Um, I'm also going to go over some basic features whilst we uh, do this. Um, you can see it's got a very iMovie style scrubber in the sense that we don't have to drag the playhead to see to scrub through. In fact, this is actually less productive in the sense that we don't get any sound preview, whereas when we drag our scrubber over, we get a nice sound preview. So this, the playhead is more for positioning where you want to start playback from, very simply. So you can see I've got this sequence. Which cuts to Lily walking to the door. She enters her keys. Goes indoors. Grabs her bag. And oh dear, the door's not shut. And uh, now you may recognise these clips from my short film called The Open Door. Um, so named because of this open door. But um, what we want to do is we're not very happy with this shot. It's very long, it's really blurry. We think there might be something better. So we can go up to our uh, media management, our library of shots. And we can scroll down and I know that there's a couple of good shots here. You can see a nice preview and you can also scrub. Now people were worried that there's no in and out points. There is very much you can set in and out points. There's a few ways to do it. One is you can just hover your playhead over one of the clips and press I and then O for the out point. Another way is you can actually select the clip, press play, and then you play it back here in our viewer. And you can set an end point there, you can see it's been updated there. And then you can set an out point and then we're nice and happy. And then very simply you can just drag your clips into the timeline. But we want to audition. This shot's cool. I might like this shot. We want to start the in point from when she walks on, so we can set I here. And then from when the door's about to shut, which is there. And then we can drag that clip onto the, our existing clip and let go. And it's going to give us a few options. Well, fantastic. How did you know we want to do something? What we want to do is we can either replace and add to audition or just add to audition. Now, the difference being that if we press replace, it's going to instantly put our new clip into the timeline and then keep the other clip as the audition, or we can just add it to an audition and keep the existing clip. We want to keep the existing clip for now, just whilst we uh, look through for some other clips. This one's cool. We've got a nice little track in. It's quite a nice spooky effect. So. Once again, we'll just we'll select the clip this time, press play, and then set the in point. As you can see, it's very shaky, but useful. Picks up a bag, enters, and we want to set it just as she closes the door. And then we can just drag that onto the clip again and press add to audition. And now we've stacked up three clips. How do we know we've got an audition? You can see this little icon here looks kind of like a spotlight. Um, I think it's meant to represent a spotlight for a play audition, maybe. Well, that's exactly what it represents, really, let's be honest. We're just going to click on that. And you can see now we've got this cool audition menu, which you can navigate with your arrow keys. 
you can press escape to exit it and then you can press enter to choose the one you want so let's just go back into it let's preview the sequence you can see it's quite handy it positions the playhead just before the start of the clip so we can test out each one we remembered we weren't so keen on this one so let's just go straight to the next one That's cool, I quite like that clip, but I think it's a bit static. So I'm going to go to the next clip. There we go, we've got a nice dynamic spooky effect. It's looking quite good, and I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to press done, and it's going to close up that option. I'm also a bit concerned about the audio um, in the crossover here, so we can quickly uh, add a fade. Just double click on the audio track, and we can extend that out and then we can go up here and we can drag a slider so that it fades in we can double click this audio at the same time um, people are a bit worried about that but no and then you can just double click to close it, it's very simple um, and even though it's collapsed and you appear to have lost your uh, your crossfade it's definitely still there in fact if you double click on it again you can see that all that data is retained despite the misleading timeline maybe we're also a bit unsure about the uh, the shakiness of this clip so it's really quickly to open that up over here in our effects view so let's go over here and we can see there's a stabilize option we can click, quickly click on that and there also might be a little bit of rolling shutter because this was shot on 550d so we can click on that as well and you can see now it is analysing for dominant movement. The stabilisation basically will smooth out the shot. It's going to scan the shot for some movement and then apply a smooth motion to it to give us a nice smooth feel. And it's also going to scale the footage uh, so that we don't get any black borders as the shot moves around adjusting for the motion. So that is basically auditioning plus some other little bits thrown in that I'll probably cover in some more depth in some other tutorials. And remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Actually, you can't rate, you can like it, and then you can recommend it to some friends. Um, yeah, do that. And tell your friends to buy Final Cut. It's not counterproductive. It is very much the platform for what is the future of editing. It does encourage you to rethink how you look at editing a little bit. Um, it's quite iMovie-like in the sense that it's I can't just grab this clip and move it over here. It doesn't want you to do that. But we'll cover stuff like that in future tutorials. So I hope this has been helpful. And I'll be back with some more Final Cut Pro tutorials this month. Quite a few this month. I'm just going to bang out a few introductory tutorials. But auditioning was one of the scariest features in the sense that um, it can appear destructive but very much not the case. And you can see that our timeline is always adjusted according to which shot we have. So I hope this was helpful, and I'll be back soon with some more tutorials. Thank you for watching.